guys, it's Corrine. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today we are making a mini album together from start to finish. Now, this is not technically a mini album tutorial. Of course, I will go through step by step what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. However, if this is a little bit too fast paced for you, or you've never made a mini album before, I would suggest that you go to my mini album tutorial. I have a very detailed video on how to make a mini album in any size, the concept of how to make a mini album. Once you understand the concept of a mini album, you can adjust it larger, smaller, anything you want. Once you understand the grasp of it, you can really make them in any size. So this is, we will go step to step, but if I'm going just a little bit too fast, like I said, or you've never made one before, I highly recommend that you stop and check out that mini album tutorial, make one that way, and then come back and follow along. But this is very simple, so um, follow along and have fun with this. This, I have not completely thought out my album altogether. So as of right now, these are the supplies that you're gonna need. There may be more supplies needed after I figure out exactly what I'm doing with the album. I just simply know that I'm making a six page album that's the finished album is gonna be seven and a half by seven and a half, and the inside pages are gonna be seven by seven. I love square albums, so that's why I'm doing a uh, Disney themed square album. So again, these are gonna be the supplies that I know offhand you need. There's probably gonna be more paper involved that you need that I just haven't figured out yet. I haven't decided on pockets or flip outs, anything like that, which I'm sure we'll be doing. So this, this will um, probably need more items as we go along, but here's the base items. So you're gonna need some good double-sided tape, like score tape, some wet glue, a ruler, pair of scissors, a scoreboard. I like to use my Tim Holtz craft pick. I also like to use, you, you don't have to use it, you can just use scissors, but I like to use my craft knife, a bone folder. I also use a brayer, not necessary. And here's a um, corner square. This one I got from colorwayarts.com. This is not necessary, but it will be helpful to miter the corners. I also have some templates that I use all the time when I make mini albums. I'll discuss these more. They're just like here's a half inch template. I use it to space where I lay my chipboard down. And then this is two pieces of the chipboard that I'm using, which is mini, um, excuse, me, excuse me, medium weight chipboard for my mini album. It's going to be what I place in between my spine piece and my cover so I gauge the amount of space that I need between the two because you're going to need a little space in order for your album not to crack. And then this one here, I <laughs> I cut my the tip of my finger pretty much, um, I took a good chunk of it off a while back using my craft knife because I was using a template like this. And let me kind of demonstrate. I had it up against the edge of my piece because I wanted to cut a half inch off. So I was running it down and it slipped off the edge and took off uh, the corner of my finger. So in order to avoid that, I have a little half inch piece that I place up against it, which tells me that I know it's a half inch off. And then I can keep my fingers way over here to the side and use my knife that way. So. These, these are not necessary by no means. You can use a ruler. I just like, I make so many mini albums, I decided to make myself some templates. So if you're making the exact same size album, you're gonna need two pieces of seven and a half by seven and a half inch chipboard. I've already added my score tape. I like to add a half inch on the side that's going to be near my binding and then a quarter inch around, and then I will add wet glue to here as well. And actually, I'm also going to use Fabri-Tac wet glue. I didn't show that, but I like to use that for the chipboard covers. Your spine, you're going to need the same height as your album. Let me turn it this way. You're going to need it to be the same height, so that's seven and a half. And if you're making the same size album I'm making with six pages with a three-eighth inch gusset, you're going to need a two and a half inch wide piece. This is graphics, medium weight chipboard that I'm using. 
I am also using a piece of Tyvek. This is a recycled piece from an envelope. I cut them apart and use them. I also have purchased them from Office Max before. You can probably get them at um, Office Depot as well. But they're Tyvek envelopes. This one, you're going to want it to be the exact same height as your spine, so that's seven and a half. And I make it four inches because my, my chipboard's going to lay on it like this. So this leaves room for my front and back cover to sit on it like this. This piece is not necessary. You can actually use recycled dog bags because like that dog food comes in. You can use those throwaway or, or reusable bags from like the Dollar Tree. I have a video showing that. You just want something under there that's going to help your binding hold up a little bit better. It is not necessary. I like to use it. You're going to need a matching color of cardstock for your hinge. This piece is seven and seven eighths by six and seven eighths and I'm giving myself a half inch gus gusset. I've added my tape on the back and I'll go over that as we um, move on. But the um, height of my album, or excuse me, the height of my pages are gonna be seven inches. So you wanna make this an eighth inch smaller than the height of your book because it's gonna need to slip in your pages. And again, we'll discuss that as we go. Again, I'm making six pages in my book. For each page, you're gonna need two pieces of paper. By the way, you can adjust your album to any size that you want. I, I chose to do seven and a half by seven and a half, and I also choose to use eight and a half by inch by 11 inch paper because I have tons of eight and a half by 11 paper on hand at all times. If I'm making a larger album, of course, you're gonna to have to use 12 by 12 paper, but if I can ever use eight and a half by 11, I choose to do it that way because I have a ton of it. So for each page, you're gonna need two pieces. And then I put six here because I'm making six pages in my album. You're gonna need one piece that's eight by seven. You're gonna score it on one half inch on the eight inch side, one half inch on either side. And then this is gonna be the back piece that once you fold these in, it's gonna to glue to it. This is gonna be the finished page size, which is seven by seven. So eight by seven, scored at one and a half inch on both sides and seven by seven. I've already made five of my pages. I'm gonna make one on camera, but here is the finished page, which is seven by seven. So it's gonna be open like this. This side's gonna sit in your hinge, and this side is left open for a pocket for you to put a pull-out mat in, which is what I like to do. So we will make those here in just a moment. I'll show you how to make those. Lastly, you're going to need to wrap around your cover. You can use pattern paper for this if you choose. I like to just start out with the same color of cardstock because I haven't thought through what I'm doing for my cover or anything like that. So I like to make the base of the album and I usually know what paper collections I'm going to use or collection, but I haven't thought anything more past that. So I'm going to wrap it in the same color cardstock and then I'll go back and add pattern papers to it. So for that, you're going to need two pieces of eight and a half by 11. Two pieces. And we're going to use a half inch tape and overlap them like this. And then this is what our album will lay on and we will wrap it around. So again, we're going to overlap them with a half inch piece of tape, which I've done so and that gives us one long piece. We will adjust the size down. That's what I use this for. After I've glued on my chipboard, I can adjust the size down and cut it off to what I need. I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get to that step. So. Let's first start with our pockets. I have, well, let me pull this back in. I've already scored it. So it's on the eight inch side and I scored it at one half inch and at seven and a half inch. So again, it's on the eight inch side, scored at one half inch. You can flip it all the way around and score it at one half inch. These are for our pockets, our inside pockets. Now, we want to slightly miter the corners from where your score mark is out. So let me do one real quick. 
and I'll show you up close. Let's see if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. Right from the score mark, I just took the slightest little bit off. This is going to just fold nicely when we fold it. I'm going to do that to all four corners. Okay, I just took a slight amount off. And now, let me get rid of this. This is the 8 by 7 piece. I am going to fold in on these and use my bone folder and give them a nice crease. Do that on both sides. Now, I'm taking my 7 and a half by 7 and a half piece and gluing these together. And this is what's going to give us our pocket page. So for this, I like to use I like to use some thin a uh, fine tip glue. So let me get rid of this as well. This is how I tend to make all my mini album pages. Um, you know what? I'm so sorry. Let me also state that you're going to need pattern paper. I have a ton here because I plan on making a couple albums, which I'll make sure to share with you. But I'm using Echo Parks collections. As you can see, they all match very well together. I'm using Echo Parks Magic and Wonder, Magical Adventure, Remember the Magic, and Wish Upon a Star. And I have not chosen any papers that I'm going to use just yet. So I cut a bunch out and I'll decide as I go. These are cut to six and three quarter inch by six and three quarter inch. You can adjust the size if you want. So you have a larger black border or a smaller black border. So sorry about that. You're going to need those as well. So let me set those aside. And now I'm just simply going to match these up. You can use um, adhesive for this as well, just regular score tape, but I like to use wet glue because it gives you a chance to kind of move it around. So I'm matching up all four corners. Once I get them matched up, I lay my arm over it to hold it in place, add my adhesive right to the edge here. This is a really fine bottle, so that's why I choose not to use it across the whole thing. It would take me too long. So I do the edges. I want to make sure it's glued down very well, and now I'll use my other glue to go across here and it dries fairly quickly. Just hold that in place and glue that down. If you prefer using your tape runner, you can do that as well. Once these are dry, and sometimes you may want to open them to make sure no glue spilt out. If it did, just wipe it off. You just don't want it gluing your page down. And then do the same thing. Just have my glue right up to the edges. Hopefully you can see that it's right on the edges. And then my fabric tag. You'll notice when I make mini albums, I am not shy with glue or tape. I like to make sure that they're adhered very well. So that is my sixth pocket. So now I'll set that aside for now. Next thing I will do is the cover. So here are my two eight and a half by 11 pieces. They're adhered together, overlapped by a half inch piece of tape. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the tape backing. We're gonna add this onto the Tyvek piece. Again, that is seven and a half by four inches. I'm going to remove all the tape backing. Okay, and I'm just going to center this onto this piece. If you don't have this material, it is not necessary. I do feel that it really does help with the um, strength of the album. So I'll use my brayer, press that down. And now I'm going to remove the tape backing off the back of this recycled piece. Okay, and this is where my half inch template comes in. You can eyeball this, you can use a ruler. I like to just 
we're leaving a half inch on the top and on the bottom of our chipboard to wrap around. Some people like to leave more, that's fine too. And I'm just gonna center this as best as I can here. And now I'll press that down. Now I'm going to add my chipboard covers. You need to leave a gap. If you press it all the way up, it will completely crack your album. The, the amount of gap you wanna leave is going to be two thicknesses of the chipboard that you're using. So to take all the guesswork out, I have made my own template I, by simply hot gluing, or maybe I think I used E6000 actually, two pieces of the chipboard that I use. I glued those together and that's gonna be my template so I know it takes all the guesswork out for me. You can very well eyeball that if you want. Let me just put the glue, my cover my glue again. So for this, I'm gonna take the tape and as I mentioned at the beginning, I like to use a half inch on the side that's gonna be on the Tyvek part just so a little bit more of it is adhered to it. And then I do like to also add glue. I'm not, like I mentioned, I'm not shy with my glue because I wanna make sure there's no bubbles in my cover. Although a piece of pattern paper would cover that up, I just like to make sure it's adhered down very well. So gluing the half inch side down and using my template, I'm just gonna butt that up and press that down. I like to really press that down while using my bone pull, or my brayer rather. You can just use your hand. Okay, and now I like working from this way, so I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, so that leaves us one half inch from the top and one half inch at the bottom. This is why we didn't worry about, we just left it at 11 inches. We're gonna cut that off now, leaving ourselves a half inch to wrap around. This again is something, I'm just moving this paper out from underneath. This is something you can eyeball, but this is where my template comes in place. When I butt this up against it, I know that it's leaving a half inch. So you can use a, um, I um, ruler and measure it out. You can eyeball it, you can use scissors. Okay, and now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. I'm butting up my half inch against that so I know that it's leaving me just enough border. So now I have a half inch going all the way around. The next thing I want to do is run my tape. I'm using my quarter inch tape all the way around the edges. And then go ahead and press that down with your bone folder. Make sure it is adhered down well. And now we want to miter the corners. You want to do the exact same thing with the corners. You want to leave the same amount of space of your chipboard. You do not want to cut all the way to your chipboard. So you want to leave yourself a little bit of gap when you cut it off. You can easily eyeball that. You can um, set a piece of chipboard against it and cut it. 
this is that piece that I got that I told you I ordered and it, if you press it up against it it's going to give you just enough space and I'll use my craft knife it's going to give you just enough space so you're not cutting right up against that chipboard and the reason I added my tape down first is so I know my tape goes all the way to the edge so when I wrap it so hopefully you can see there it leaves just enough space so I'm going to do that to all four corners okay so the next thing you want to do is bend where you want your paper folded so just kind of bend all four pieces just starting to get the paper in the direction you want it to go you're breaking up those fibers in the paper and then just kind of use your hands, fold it over. Do that with all of your corners. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape backings from all sides. And then I like to do the long sides first. Just really press that down. And then go back over that with your bone folder. Turn it around and do the same thing on this side. kind of pushing it up as I go to make sure I'm getting it nice and snug up against the edge of that chipboard. Okay, now before you do these corners, you're going to have a little point right here. You want to fold in that point. Otherwise, if you fold it over like that, it's going to give you a weird edge. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up, but I like to just go through and cut it. So I'm just, but if you cut too much, you run the risk of your chipboard showing. So don't cut off too much. So now there's a little piece right there. I'm going to fold that in with my bone folder. I'm going to do that with all four corners. Now I'm going to go in and fold all four corners, fold those little, or tuck those little pieces in, that little edge. It's going to give you a nice clean fold. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold those over and I'll show you. Let me do the other side as well real quick. Again, pressing that down and now I'm also going to take my bone folder and just go along all the edges here make sure it's nice and now as you can see it's a perfect fold okay so now we have the cover for our mini album done at this point Sometimes if, if I sell blank albums, um, which I'll put a link to in the description box below if you don't like that portion of making a mini album, you don't like to do the base album, I do sell those. At this point, I would add the same matching color cardstock to the inside of the album. But being that I know that I'm, I'm making the album myself, I'm going to wait and just put pattern paper down. Um, However, we're going to need a tiny piece here. I just thought of that. I'll be right back. Let me go cut that and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is a piece that I didn't think about when I was first making the album that you will want to use. You can use pattern for this. I Again, I haven't thought that much through, so I'm just going to use black cardstock. And then when I go to put 
a piece of pattern paper up to it, it's going to butt up to our hinge. So you're just covering, you just want it to cover this um, open exposed part. So whether you do that with pattern paper or matching cardstock, it's up to you. So this is seven and three eighths by six inches. So it's slightly shorter than the height of my album. And six inches, you can do a little bit less if you want. You can do the same. I like to cover it completely with tape, like I said. Really want to make sure this is adhered well. I'm even going to add a small amount into the grooves here. You don't have to do this part, but I like that when it folds in there, it has something to grab onto. So I'm just going to eyeball this, keeping in mind that you're going to have pattern paper over it. You just more or less want to get the top to bottom centered. You want as much on the top as you do the bottom if you can. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and press that down. And then I'm going to start folding my covers. You want to show that paper where it needs to bend. Be very gentle with this part. Um, I have pushed too hard before and you can actually poke right through the paper. So even though on camera it may look like I'm pressing hard, I am just gently pressing that. Slowly want to press that in and do the exact same thing to the other side. Use your fingers, figure out exactly where that crease is work with it slowly and then slowly press that in with your bone folder. Do not press too hard. Okay, and then once I have it like that, I press something on it to hold it in its place and set that aside while I'm working on the rest. Okay, so the next thing I wanna work on is our hinge. This again is six and seven eighths because our pockets are seven inches so I'm making it one eighth inch smaller so it fits in our pocket because this is what our pocket is going to adhere to so I cut mine to six and seven eighths of an inch and the length is going to be determined by what size gusset you have and how many pages you have I've predetermined that I'm going to have six pages with a three eighth inch gusset okay so let's just go over quickly how to do this. I go over in so much more detail on my mini album tutorial. So if this is a little too fast for you, please check out that video tutorial, but I will try to explain it well enough um, here as well. So you wanna put it in on the length of your album. So this is going to be seven and seven eighths. I'm scoring it at one half inch and then one inch. Then the next one is going to be my gusset. So I'm leaving a 3 8 inch gusset. So I'm counting over 3 eighths of an inch and then scoring again. Then you're going to do 1 half inch, 1 half inch, 3 eighth inch. 1 half inch, 1 half inch, 3 eighth inch. When you fold over the two 1 half inches together, that's going to be our flange that our pocket is going to sit on. If Just to explain this, if you were going to give yourself a half inch gusset, on each in between each of your pages then you would simply score one half one half one half just a half inch apart so half inch one inch one and a half two two and a half three three and a half four so on but again for my album I don't need a lot of space in between the pages so three eighths is perfect so I've scored it one half inch and then one inch I counted over three one two three and I scored there. Then you want to start your next half inches again to allow yourself a flange. So you count over four because four of these tick marks are going to be a half inch. So you count over four and score. Count over four and score. Okay, so that's going to be your second page. Then you're going to leave yourself a gusset. So you're going to count over three because you're leaving a three eighth inch gusset and scoring. Then you start all over again with counting over four and score. I hope this makes sense to you. Like I said, please check out my mini album tutorial if you've never made one before. So now you want to flip it over and you're going to add tape to each page, each of the half inch gussets. 
only one side because you're adhering them together. So I adhered my half inch tape to the half inch and I'm going to be folding it to this half inch. You want to leave no tape on your gusset mark. Then I like skipping over and adding the tape on the top part. So here's my half inch, there's going to be no tape. And then my next half inch, there's tape because I'm gluing those two half inches together. Again, you're going to skip your gusset, add your tape to your two half inch pieces that you're gluing together, skip your gusset, tape for the, your next two pieces, skip your gusset. Never put tape on your gusset. Now you're going to want to fold over on these pieces. And I like to use my bone folder, get them really pressed down. And then we're folding over only on the half inch pieces. Okay, now we're going to skip and fold over to the next half inch piece. Remove the tape backing. And then fold it back just to kind of get it going the way it, it needs to go. And it gets it out of your way so you can see where you're folding. I, I go through this so much more clearly on my mini album tutorial and slower. So if you've never done one of these, check that out and I hope that'll really walk you through it. But for those of you who have done a hinge before, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. You may even be skipping through this part. Again, using my bone folder as I go. So this is going to be our hinge that holds all our pages onto our chipboard covers. Now, kind of work these back and forth. This is going to give us our six flanges. So our paper, our pockets have six to hold on to. And here is going to be our six flanges. You can do as many as you want. I like to take my ruler and just kind of make sure that it's even because with paper and score marks, it may not be even from top to bottom. So that's right at two inches. I like to measure the center and then flip it around and do the other side and it's perfect. With that being exactly where I want, I'm going to go ahead and add my tape covering the entire back. This is one inch tape. okay if it slightly overlaps. Now I like to really press that down. Okay, now we need to add tape to all of these flanges here. So I'm going to use quarter inch tape for that. Okay, so now I've added tape to all the front and back side of each flange. Again, that's what your pocket's going to be holding on to. I want to really press that down with my bone folder. Make sure it's adhered down very well. Go through each one, plus it kind of gets your pages moving to make them easier to open and close. Okay, so once that's down, we're going to go ahead and pull our bolt book back. Excuse me. And we're going to use this as our guide. We just kind of want to center that right in the middle. For this, if you've never done it before, you may be more comfortable with using wet glue. Um, I just eyeball it and hope for the best. <laughs> I've gotten pretty decent at it, but I've had to pull it up a couple times to move it around. That's normal, but you just kind of want to eyeball it. Sometimes this takes me longer than others. 
So I'm looking from the top to the bottom, trying to center it as best as I can. And then I'm very lightly going to press it down and just kind of look at how much space. And this is perfect. So being that it is, I'm going to press that down. And then this is where I use my brayer. Again, you don't need to. You can just press it down with your hands or your bone folder. But I like to just kind of really go back and forth, moving those pages open and shut. Okay, now that I'm happy with that, we're going to go ahead and start putting our pockets on. So there's always going to be one side that's lined up perfect. I always look for that side. And then I kind of just put, put it on here to see. Okay, that should be perfect. So I like to remove the tape from just one side. and lightly put your page on there. You can pull it off if necessary, if it's not perfect, but just kind of lightly press it on there. And I like to look to see how much room I have on either side, and this looks perfect. So I'm gonna again, lightly press that down, make sure I'm happy with it, which I'm not because it left too much of a gap. So let me pull that back off and do this again. And I'm gonna lightly press that. Okay, and this I'm really happy with. So I'm going to press that in place and then reach under here and pull the tape backing off on this side. Okay, and then press that down. If you get anything on your paper, like this looks like a little bit of glue. Yeah, that was glue. That comes right off with a uh, glue eraser. These are really cheap, easy to find. Okay, so now this is going to be my guide for my next page. So again, just removing one side. I'm going to pick the side that's perfect. Lightly set it down and I'm matching it up to the first page because you want all your pages the same. Lightly pressing that down, I'm gonna check and make sure it looks good, which it does. And now I'm pressing that down. Okay, go back here and remove the back of this and press that down. Okay, and now we have the base of our album together. Okay, so I'm back and I've cut out some pockets and flips. I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of this in here. We'll see as we go through the album, but I will go ahead and give you the measurements in case um, we do use these and you want to follow along. So I plan on doing a waterfall in the album and the base of the waterfall is seven by six and a half inches. And then I've cut six flips, and these will hold four by six photos. These are cut to the exact same width of the album, so it's, or of the base, excuse me. So it's six and a half, and I've cut these by five and scored them at a half inch. So that'll leave us with a four and a half by six and a half base so we can put a four by six photo on it. And I also cut another piece that is eight inches long by two and three quarters wide. And I scored it at one inch. And that is for me to glue to the back of the waterfall and hold it in place, most likely with a magnet, but we'll decide at that point. I have also cut three pockets mitered the corners and I slightly mitered the tops as well. These are cut to eight by four and I've scored them on three sides. These would be straight pockets in the album. 
8 inches by 4 inches, scored it 1 half inch, 1 half inch, turn it, and 1 half inch. So here's before it's folded, you can see. Three of those, I most likely will use those. I love using pockets. And then I also made um, a little flip out that we can glue in. And it's perfect for three by four photos. And this is cut to five by eight and a half long. And I set it in the scoreboard on the eight inch side. I scored it at four inches and eight inches. That leaves us with a half inch tab to glue onto our page, which I'll reiterate all these when we put them in our album. Here's for an accordion. I love doing an accordion on a page because it, it allows for a lot more photos. So these will hold um, four by six photos as well. And I did five of them cut to nine by six and a half and I scored them in half at four and a half. So nine inches long, six and a half tall, scored in half on the long side at four and a half. And then I have just different size flips. So I have one here that is five by seven. On the five inch side, I scored it at a half inch. And if you've never done flips in an album, we're gonna go over these, we're gonna put these in here. I love having different sizes throughout. I did a seven by six. On the six inch side, I scored it at a half inch. This one's gonna be a top flip open. So it is six and a half by seven. And on the six and a half inch side, I believe, let me double check that. On the six and a half inch side, I scored it at one half inch to give us our tab. This is gonna be our tab that we need to glue. Another flip here that is seven by seven and a half. And on the seven and a half inch side, I scored it at a half inch. So this is gonna end up being the same size as our page. And then a seven by six scored at half inch on the six inch side. So let's go ahead and put these in. Um, I like to do these before putting in pattern paper, but sometimes if you put in pattern paper, you can still work around that. But I like to do it before the pattern paper. And keep in mind, my pages, the size of my pages are seven by seven. I always cut my papers down a quarter inch smaller, or I shouldn't say always, I usually cut my paper. It depends on how much border I want. But this Disney paper goes so well with the black that I wanted to give myself a little bit more of a border. So I cut my papers to six and three quarters inch. No matter what I'm going to be using, like this one is seven by six, it ends up being seven by five and a half. I'm just gonna make it a quarter inch smaller on the length and a quarter inch smaller on the width. So I probably will not go over all those page sizes or of the pattern paper. Just keep in mind, I'm gonna do everything a quarter inch smaller than my main page. So I think probably the first thing I will do is put a pocket on this page. So I like to do tabs. You can glue a piece of paper directly down, but it's not gonna allow for a lot of room in your pocket. It's gonna be tight if you're gluing it directly down. But by making these tabs, by giving us a half inch tab on either all three sides, it's going to allow for a little bit of movement and a little more room to fit stuff in the pocket. And that's always my goal is to be able to fit more um, photos and stuff. Also, if we glue the pocket down now, cause I haven't decided on my paper, I will still be able to slide it in. Let me show you here. I will still, and I won't waste a full piece of paper on that being that the, out, pocket's going to cover half of it. I'll cut the paper down accordingly, but I'll still be able to slide in my pattern paper afterwards. If you're more comfortable with gluing on your pattern paper first and then your pocket, by all means do that. And there's a lot of times that I do that, but I haven't decided what papers I'm using yet as far as in the collection. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac wet glue because it gives you a moment to move it around, get it perfectly in place. I'm 
I'm going to make sure to add glue to the entire tab. The other thing I like doing when I'm working black on black, I like to put a piece of paper behind the page I'm working on because it gives me a perfect view of my pocket. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. So I'm just going to line that up on the bottom and the sides and then really press that down. If I was gluing this without tabs and directly onto the page, that would not allow me to add my pattern paper. I mean, I could, but I would have too much of a black border. By doing it the way I'm doing it, it's gonna allow me to go back and add in my pattern paper to it. And that's pretty much already tacked down. It, it goes pretty quickly. So now I don't want to do another pocket. I want to probably do a flip. So you have two ways that you can do a flip. You can, this is going to be your glue tab. You can glue it to the outside here and then add your pattern paper over it and you'll never see it. Or in this case, being that we made pocket pages, you can glue it right into the pocket, which I think is the way I'm going to go. And that's why I slightly mitered the corners. You want to slightly miter those like I showed you earlier just so it slides in there nicely. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And I'm trying to decide, I'll wait. I'm, one of them, I'm gonna put a pocket underneath. So being that I'm gonna put it inside the, the pocket there, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this side. You don't wanna go too crazy with the glue or it'll seep out, which just wipe it off if it does seep out. So I'm just putting that right inside. And again, you don't want too much because you don't want to glue that pocket shut. That's We want to leave that open for a pull-out mat. This allows me to move it around right where I want, press it down. And this one that I'm working on is 7 by 6. I scored it at 1 half inch, leaving myself a little room here. And also, if you're going to go ahead and open it, and if you do have any glue, just you use your glue eraser or your fingers and just kind of get that out of there. Um, if you're going to add magnets, which I will most likely do, I'm going to go back and add them in. So on this page, I think I'm going to do this one that I was showing you. Now this one is eight and a half inches long by five inches tall, and I scored it at four inches and at eight inches, so it leaves me a half tab. And I'm going to glue that right in the side of this and it will fold like this and open up. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, add my glue right on that tab. And I'm going to pretty much center it here. Let me go ahead and fold it and just make sure it's butted up right against that and then press it down. I most likely will add a magnet to this one as well, but like I said, I'll decide that as we go. Next page I'll leave blank. I won't put anything. This one I think I'm going to do a combination of a pocket and then a flip open. You can go crazy with these flips. You can add a flip. If if we didn't already bind our pocket, which you could even still do now, you don't, you wouldn't have to. But um, I've done albums before where I did a lot of flips, and I've added flips to both sides of the page. So I added my flip before I bound it to my hinge. Um, you can still do it, like I mentioned, which I'll show you here again in a second. Again, I'm just lining that up. That wet glue gives me a second to move it around and then I'll really press that down. But what I was saying is if you've already added your hinge but you still wanna add one that flips open this way, just glue the tab to the page right there and then add your pattern paper over it so it hides it. So glue it down like that, add your pattern paper. Now I think I'm going to 
how to flip. Oh no, I think this, there we go. I think, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a flip to this side. This one I'm doing is seven by seven and a half, squared at one half inch. And then it's gonna be it's gonna be the finished size of my page. And then press that down. So now on this page. Maybe I'll leave that one. This one's a top flip. So let me put my paper under it to see what I'm doing here on my scrap paper. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and glue that to the top. I left it um, a little bit so to show all the different pattern papers that I plan on using. So this one is six and a half by seven, scored at, at one half inch on the six and a half inch side. So being that I don't have a pocket up there, I'm going to just glue, I'm gonna put glue on the back of the tab. And as previously mentioned, our pattern paper will hide this tab. And if you already put your pattern paper and you decide to go back in and add a tab, you could even do that too. You just gotta get creative, just add maybe a little border of pattern paper or something a little different. I think I'm gonna turn the album real quick so I can see up here to make sure I'm lining it up perfectly. Yep. So once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna press that down. I see a little bit of glue here, glue residue. It just comes right off. And then let's see here. The next page, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pocket, and so I'll put my pocket here, pressing down on all three sides. I had glue on my fingers, so I'm getting glue on there, so let me, again, pattern paper will cover that up, but still, I don't want it sticking to the other page, so I'll just get that off there. So I still have my waterfall. I think I'll do the waterfall on the back page and then the accordion on this one. So for this one, I think I'll just go ahead and do a flip. I have not creased that with my bone folder. This one here is seven by six and scored at one half inch on the seven, excuse me, on the six inch side, scored at one half inch. You can adjust these to any size you want. I think I'll put it on the same page as the pockets. So I'm gonna just put my glue on the outside of the tab. Turn it around so I can see it a little bit better, my angle. And like I mentioned, if you're going to use magnets, you want to put them on before you put the pattern paper so you can hide them under your pattern paper so it looks flawless. Any that I'm going to add magnets to, I'll do that and then I'll just come back and show you quickly where I added them. Let me decide where I'm going to do my waterfall. Yeah, I'm gonna do the waterfall on the very back page. So, I'll go ahead and do this flip on this last page here. This one is five by seven, scored at a half inch. And these will hold three by four photos or four by four photos. 
This album itself will hold all three. It will hold three by four, four by four, and four by six. Okay, I'm gonna add glue to the inside of the tab. Okay, and I'm gonna bump that up to the edge, press that down. Okay, so for my waterfall, I'm going to do that on the last page here. Um, but I will have to, I, I do want to put pattern paper down first before I do that. But let me um, on screen quickly do show you the waterfall. I like to do a base on this. So my base on the waterfall, the base page that's going to sit on the book itself is seven by six and a half. And I'm going to use that as my guide. And then you want to cut your pieces the exact same width, which is six and a half. Then you want to cut them long enough to hold a four by six photo. So I cut them to five. That way I could give myself a half inch score. And then when it's folded, that's going to leave me with four and a half tall by six and a half wide. It's going to hold a four by six photo perfectly. So go ahead and add your glue to the back part of the tab. And butt it all the way to the top of your base here. You can use um, tape, tape runner, score tape. Again, my reasoning is so I can move it around slightly. Press that down. And now you're going to use that as your guide to add your next piece. You're going to butt it right up against that last piece. You don't want to go that. You want to go right under it. Take your time and press it right up to it. Make sure it's even on the sides and then press it down. And now I'm going to use this one as my guide for the next one. And the next thing I'm going to do is glue on my tab piece. You could use a decorative punch on the edge if you wanted to. But this one I left myself a inch tab just so it had plenty of room to grab onto and glue. So I'm going to try and center that just by eyeballing it. And you want to do this before you glue it to your page. So that piece again is eight inches by two and three quarters and I've scored it at one inch on the top. So I'll go back and add pattern paper to this, but that's all ready to go for my very back page. So the next thing I want to do lastly is the accordion. I have five pieces of paper, nine by six and a half. scored in half at four and a half. So when we fold it, it's going to be like this. It's going to hold four by six photos. So this you're going to do just like you did in elementary school. We're going to do, we're going to overlap them. And then you're going to want something to help keep it closed. So we're just simply going to overlap them like this and glue them. We're going to do one after the other. What I like to do is add glue to my main piece and then glue to the edge of the other piece that's going to be adhering to. So I know that the glue goes all the way across. I'm going to line it up. Next one. Add my glue mostly to this one. That's part of why I like this fabric tack. It does adhere pretty quickly. 
You're not waiting too long. But it's a very strong hold. So again, I'm just going to sandwich that. Butt it up there as best I can. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then press that down. You can do more or less of these. I don't like to do too many because I'm keeping in mind that pattern paper is going to be added to it along with photos. And you don't have to have pattern paper inside of these being that photos are going to be added. Sometimes I do, most of the time I do, just because there's so many cute papers to choose from. I like to use them. But um, if you're running low on paper or you don't want the extra bulk, you can leave it without because photos will be added anyways. And one last one. We have our accordion. Now, of course, I will add pattern paper to the front. And I have this adorable ribbon that should match the album perfectly that I plan to adhere down and, and use this to tie to keep it shut. So I'll add my ribbon before I adhere it down to my page, but I want to go ahead and add my pattern paper before I do that. So let me add some magnets throughout the book and I'll be right back to show you where I've added those. Okay, so I've added all my magnets and I did let them sit overnight. So I just thought I would quickly share with you where I added them. And I did use Multimedia Matte by Ranger to add them. So for this flip here, I added two. How I add them is I place one of them where I want. I let that dry for a couple hours. I come back and I'll place a piece of parchment paper or nonstick paper over it. And then I will take another magnet, let it attach itself to it, add my glue to this side, and close down my paper. And if I can fit a clamp over it, I usually will put a clamp over it. This way, it's keeping parchment paper between the two magnets because I've had them where the glue has slightly seeped out and the page will shut itself to it, will glue itself down. So again, I glue one side, let it sit for a few hours, sometimes overnight, set a piece of nonstick paper, stick the other magnet right to the top, add glue to the back, and then close my paper and then usually put something heavy on it. The magnets I've got from eBay quite a while ago. Um, I haven't bought them actually in probably a couple of years. So if I can still find the link to the seller that I purchased them from, I'll add that in the description box. But I, I apologize, I can't promise that. I do know that Basic Gray sells magnets as well. I added two to here. And see what I mean that the glue seeped out? Had I not put this piece of parchment paper, it would have glued the page shut. Basically, I added magnets to every flip page. So if you're going to follow along, that's what I did. I Every flip page. I added one up here. I know it's a weird, but being that it, it opens and closes, I didn't want any bubble up here. That way the pages open and close easily. And lastly on this page here. So I'm going to go and add my papers. I'm going to leave a quarter inch border. So no matter what size like this flip is, whatever the size flip is, I'm going to cut my paper down to a quarter inch smaller on the width and the height. And I will see you in the next video for the decorating of this album. If you stayed with me this entire time, I really appreciate it. And leave me any questions or comments down in the description box or down in the comments below and I'll be happy to try and answer them for you. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.